you've gotten into this home distilling thing, you've put a few different recipes through your still, and you're finding out that everything kind of just tastes the same, you're not alone, trust me. That's what we're talking about today. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still at the Channel, all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So here's the deal team. One of the Patreons got in touch with me recently and was slightly, I guess, frustrated is probably the right word, that it seemed like everything they were making, didn't matter whether they were making, you know, a vodka or a whiskey or a rum, was kind of coming out of the still tasting pretty similar to each other and it was perplexing them and, you know, frustrating them. I've got my computer here and I'm going to kind of talk through the response that I gave this guy because I think that there's more than a few other people out there feeling the same way and it reminded me that the first few things I put through the still when I tasted them, you know, right away, I kind of thought these taste more the same than they taste different. So let's talk through the, uh, the answers that I gave him and hopefully it'll help you out too. First up, I want to talk about expectations. Now, please, please, please do not take any of this as me trying to take away from the craft or dampen people's excitement. Quite the opposite. I just want to say that remember that if you're trying to compare everything you make to your favorite spirits that you can buy elsewhere or someone else's spirits who's been doing this for years and years, you have to remember, guys, it's a craft. It is a craft to be chased, to be learned, to make mistakes, to learn from your mistakes, to evolve, develop, and keep chasing the craft. I know, I know that if you jump onto forums or Facebook groups or whatever, there's going to be a whole lot of people talking about how their spirits or the spirits that you can make are so much better than all the commercial spirits out there. And to a degree, I think that's true. You can make a perfect spirit for yourself because you can make what you want. Once you've built up the knowledge and the experience, you can, you can work towards that. But remember, guys, the people that are doing this commercially have been doing the same thing. <laughs> and if you're comparing it to a big distillery in Scotland, for example, think about all the combined years of experience that they've got going into those products or your favorite rum, or your favorite gin, or whatever it happens to be. It's not just one person, it's a large corporation in many cases, working towards consistency and flavor and a great product that's going to sell. Is that true of all commercial companies? Fuck no! There are a bunch of people out there that will just try and make a buck. I get that, I understand that. But I just want to temper your expectations a little bit and say that you're not going to make something that's completely world-class right out of the gate. Or it's not that you can't, it's that you have to work towards it. Second of all, let's talk about the actual tasting, and it's, in my mind, kind of like a muscle memory thing. It's, it's once again something you have to work towards. If you haven't enjoyed craft spirits from a appreciation point of view, or from pulling it apart and really trying to decide what's really there and look at all the different aspects of it. If you're not used to that and you haven't been doing it for a long, long time, it's going to take a while to build that up. Dude, when I first started this channel, everything just tasted like Bernie to me. It took me a long time to start to glimpse behind the curtain of what was the most obvious things in a glass. And it's going to take new people to the uh, craft of tasting some time to build that up as well. I'm not going to go into all the details on this now because this is a, a video in and of itself. I can't remember if I've, I can't remember if I made a video on this already or not. If I have, I'll put it up here. If not, um, let me know and we'll, we can think about making one. But a few tips. Taste your spirits next to each other. Don't purely go on memory. That is really hard to do, especially when you're getting new to it and you're not very familiar with the products you've made. Put them next to each other, find all the things that are similar in them, and then start looking for the things that differ. Keep looking, see if you can find more things that differ. See if they remind you of something, if they remind you of different things, if they give you different emotional responses. I know that sounds wanky and weird to some people, but trust me, it will help you find specific flavors in those glasses as well. Let's talk ingredients, and I want to come at this from two different aspects. 
There seem to be two different types of people in this distilling hobby. Uh, one is they keep using the same ingredient over and over again, and they do slightly different things to see if they can change it. Uh, and the other is they just shotgun approach, you know, all sorts of different things all over the place. And there are advantages and disadvantages to both of those. But, but I'm here to tell you right now that yes, ingredients do matter. Different types of barley matter, different types of corn matter. If you want to make something that tastes different from something else, changing up the ingredients and going with a different product, even if it is a different base malt, for example, is going to give you a different result to some varying degree. That is what the Great Base Malt Collab is all about, right? <laughs> on the flip side, on the flip side, this craft is full of little levers that you can push and pull. And what I mean by that is there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different things that you can change or play with or mess with or alter as the distiller to give you a different flavor profile. Ingredients are not the be all end all of it. I want to talk about a few of those things in this video. There's no way that I'm going to cover all of them uh, in this video. So if I don't mention something that you think is a really big uh, lever to pull or push when it comes to flavor, feel free to mention it in the comments down below. I'd love to see the discussion down there and see what everyone comes up with. Cool. You guys probably know this if you've been watching the channel for a little while, but I came from uh, homebrewed beer before I got into spirits. And putting the brewer's hat on, the biggest thing that jumps out to me in terms of flavor differences after the ingredients is yeast. And yeah, sure, you could call that one of the ingredients, whatever. But for some people, it's not so obvious. If you're using the same yeast every single time, you're going to get certain characteristics from that yeast that carry over into every spirit you make. It's not just the type of yeast that you use, it's how much yeast you pitch to start with, the temperature you ferment at, the amount of time that you let it ferment for, even the shape and the size of the vessel you're fermenting in is going to change things slightly. If you don't believe me on that, listen to the podcast that I just recorded with uh, Matt from Lunatic and Lover and he talks about how that exact thing happens to him. In addition to the primary or the standard fermentation you have, you can also let it sour afterwards. You can let the natural bugs in the mash take over and sour the wort as well, which is once again going to change flavor a whole lot going forward. Distillation. Here comes a whole host of different factors. Are you distilling once, twice, three times, 17 times? What sort of still are you using? Are you using a straight pot still? Are you using plates? Are you using a reflux still? How much copper is coming in contact with the vapor and at what points in the vapor path is it coming into contact with it? Is your condenser copper? Is your condenser stainless steel? What is the temperature of the condenser and this, how far through that condenser are the vapors making it before they get condensed? What is the final offtake temperature that you're taking? <laughs> the speed of the distillation, all of these things are going to have a small effect on the final flavor of the product. Once you're done with distillation or during distillation, depending on how you do it, um, the choice in cuts, how much of the heads are you taking? How far down into the tails are you gonna go delving and diving for flavor? And this is not a small lever. This is a large lever that you can really crank in one direction or the other. Once you're done with distillation, we kind of split into uh, things that are going to be aged and things that are not going to be aged. For things that are not going to be aged, uh, how much are you proofing it down? What are you proofing it down with? What is the water profile of the water that you're proofing it down with? <laughs> are you going to let it marry for a certain amount of time? How fast are you going to proof it down? Uh, I hope you're starting to get the picture here, guys. There's a whole lot of factors that you can mess with. Let's flip back over to the products that are being aged. And, oh, man, this... Uh, this gets crazy real quick. So the wood that you're using to age with, is it French oak, Hungarian oak, US white oak, apple, pecan, whatever, you know, fruit wood or nut wood that you've managed to get hold of uh, in your location that you think might work? What is the toast on it? What is the char on it? How much of it compared to how much spirit? The amount of time that you let it sit with that wood to gather the wood flavor back into the spirit. And then you start getting into all the crazy things that are uh, borderline magical. Magical. In aging spirits. The micro oxidation, the barrel esterification, all the crazy things that make aging aging, not just wooding. The amount of time, the amount of oxygen that's getting into it, the humidity, the temperature, all of these things are going to play a big, big part 
in the different flavors that are imparted on that spirit. You think we're done? Nope, we're not done. What about blending? You've got 15 different barrels sitting there. You can taste them all. Uh, and trust me, if you put 15 different spirits down that are exactly the same with exactly the same wood and exactly the same barrels and exactly the same warehouse, they're not going to taste the same. They just won't. Train, 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 waiting for the train. So now it's up to you. Are you going to do single barrels where you just pull stuff out of the barrel and call it a finished product or maybe proof it down maybe not or are you going to blend those barrels together in which case how much spirit from each barrel are you taking to put into that mixture that you're calling the blend <laughs> if you're new to distilling uh, your head is probably spinning right now and that's kind of what i wanted to do i wanted to in some ways overwhelm you with all the different options that we have to create a flavor profile as distillers. And you'll notice I didn't go through each one and explain you know, the, the different sides of it or the extremes of it or the, the nuance of each of those things. Because I hope you can understand that if I tried to do that, this video would be six hours long. Instead, what I wanted to do is to motivate you, to get you thinking about what it is that you're actually playing with in terms of changing flavor profiles between different spirits. Are you perhaps just switching up the ingredients you use and doing the rest of the process in exactly the same way and expecting it to come out as a very, very different product? Any little one of those things along that process is going to change the flavor, even if it is in a microscopic, weeny tiny way. But you take 15, 20, 30 different factors and you push them all towards a certain flavor profile, those little incremental changes start to add up towards a very, very, very different spirit. Anyway, guys, please, please, if you're new to distilling, don't let this video discourage you. That is not what it is about. I want it to make you excited. I want you to think about all the possibilities of different things you can play with, different things that you can experiment with. And here's the little sneaky secret, team. The commercial spirits world has traditionally been kind of shit at playing with all of these different things. They tend to fall into a groove that's the path of least resistance, either for their house flavor or for the industry in general. Talk to some people that have gone through distillery tours and multiple scotch distilleries and you're going to find out what I mean. The world of craft spirits is exploding and there are people pushing boundaries in all of these different directions and it is freaking exciting to see we, as home distillers, uh, can help influence that as well. Somewhere, someone right now in a shed, in a garage, in their laundry or kitchen is probably doing something that can turn into the next big thing in craft spirits. Just look at the beer world. Look at what happened with craft beer and homebrew beer, how it exploded and how homebrewers managed to influence craft distilleries and craft distilleries influenced homebrewers. It's pretty freaking exciting and we can do that too. I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. These are the people that contribute very generously directly to the channel and let me mess around with these things so I can share it with you. Speaking of which, we've got a video coming up tomorrow that's doing kind of just that. Anyway, if you're finding value in these videos or the podcast or the website calculators, whatever it happens to be, and you want to help contribute directly to the channel, you can go to chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways that you can help support the channel. One of them being, if it's right for you, Patreon. If this video managed to inspire you a little bit to try something different, hit the like button for me. That would be awesome. If you're not subscribed already and you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button too. If it just bummed you out and uh, it's made you depressed, you've got my permission to hit the thumbs down button. Go for it. That's cool. <laughs> I'll catch you next time, guys. In fact, that'll be tomorrow with a distilling video. Keep on chasing the craft, everyone. See ya.